And here we go. Hey everybody, we are live streaming to you on YouTube, Facebook, four different channels. Um, we, I got a bunch of, I guess you'll, you could see some of our test comments there. If you make a comment, comments should come through here. We'll see if they, if they work. Uh, so go ahead and start commenting there. You can, anything you say will be shown across the multiple platforms. I've got uh, my friend Shireen here. Say hi, Shireen. Hi friends, how's it going? All right, I'm so there's like, Shireen. I'm just checking to see <laughs> all the streams. I'm muting them all so that we don't have crazy amounts of feedback. I'm just, you know, yep. geeking out right now. So, okay, and uh, yeah, I gotta, I gotta um, hit our Facebooks and just see. So, okay, we've got people type in, great. So the comments yeah. are working. Hey, Tiago, hey, Egon, great. Um, so we're live, Yay, we're doing this. It's happening. Woohoo! I see <laughs> Hello it. from Colorado, um, all right. <laughs> I see us on both <laughs> Facebook pages, though I'm not okay. seeing us on YouTube. I don't know if that matters. I uh, we're getting comments from YouTube and I'm okay. seeing live chats. That's so I think we're um I think we're good. I think we're good on YouTube. We'll just uh we'll just keep going with this. Okay. All right. So lots to talk about today. Um you know, this is uh, you know, I, I feel like this is the year for us people. We've I think a lot of people have had a couple tough years. I I feel like, you know, 2018 could be a really good year. And today I would like to talk about ways we can make it a great year. And part of that I think is really uh, where we're coming from as a tribe, as a people, mm -hmm. all of that. Hello from Italy and Texas, Hello. awesome, great. So, and also if there's anything that you, like, you really got your mind on, you wanna hear us talk about, this show is for you. We're gonna do whatever you guys wanna do. So it's like if you have something that's like, hey, I'd like you guys to do this or that or talk about this or that. We're here for you. So um, we're going to rock this thing. We're going to rock this thing. Oh, cool. So, Gary, it looks like the comments are on the right. Should I move over? No, you're perfect. Okay. You're perfect. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, in fact, you can go ahead. I mean, I totally geek out on a new year. Like, I don't know if it's like, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm like a granola girl and I just like new starts. But. And I, and I actually watched your live the other day at the beginning where you were talking about how 2016 and 2017 were just like total train wrecks. And I do think a lot of people felt that. <laughs> so, you know, what do you think, Garrett? What are you excited about in 2018? You know, I am excited about the, the prospect of coming from a higher place as a tribe. And I'm also excited about all the crap that we've been through, I think has shown us that we need to line it up better mm. that there is um you know the old ways of doing things aren't working anymore and that means that we have to find much much better ways of doing things and i don't think it's like what you do so much is where you're coming from because we can't figure stuff out like i mean we can kind of figure stuff out <laughs> but when you really look at these macrocosmic issues where we're dealing with crazy presidents and crazy situations and crazy economies and all of that, you know, that is something that we uh, are going to need to change culturally. Yeah. That is your only, our only choice. And how do you change anything culturally? Um, that's the big question. So I'm curious if the people on Facebook are able to get their chats through, because I'm not seeing any chats on Facebook unless we're not broadcasting to Facebook, which is a possibility. Well, no, no I'm, I'm seeing. We're on Facebook. I'm, there's 30. Okay, we're on Facebook. Yeah, there's a bunch and, of people and, and the chats aren't coming through. So that's the problem. Mm -hmm. So for whatever reason, our little chatty thing is only showing the YouTube chats. How unfortunate. Oh, I spent yeah. all day yesterday uh, making sure the Facebook chats would work and now they're not working. So thank you <laughs> Restream yeah. for destroying my Facebook chat <laughs> right before we went live. Well, no, <laughs> I don't... At, at least, cause I'm looking at both of them on Facebook Live, so I can yeah. see the YouTube chats next to you and then I can see the Facebook chats like outside of the video. So at least we have them, yeah. you know, they're not showing up all cool, but you know, we got them. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, I'm 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 typing right now to restream saying you guys just killed my Facebook. Uh, throw in <laughs> my freaking ear. <laughs> Facebook uh, comments. So <laughs> I like that's very interesting. So where we are coming from, you feel is like yeah. an important thing. 
Yeah. I like yeah, where we're where we're coming from and, and just realizing that we are part of a um, like the organism, the human organism is not just, you know, uh, all the all the systems we're in, which the systems affect us psychologically, but also kind of um, there's something deeper in each of us that is being triggered by the way uh, we all are showing up in the world. And so um you know, there's a, let, let me tell you about uh, grasshoppers and locusts, because I just, I just heard about this. So apparently, um, when there is ample uh, green fields, if you will, the grasshoppers spread like crazy. And so many, many grasshoppers, they reproduce like crazy, and there's just becomes these tons of grasshoppers. And with all these grasshoppers, they start eating away all the the, the green fields, and as the green fields uh, diminish, the grasshoppers get more and more concentrated in that, those, those areas of green that are left. Mm. And, but the thing is, once they get concentrated enough, it triggers something in the grasshoppers, and the grasshoppers transform into locusts. Is this is what I've heard now. I haven't checked my work on this, but I, I do believe this is true because I heard it from what seemed like a trustworthy source. So uh, so their heads change, the bodies change, and they become hyper aggressive. Oh, wow. And it's because now they're like bumping into each other. And so one hyper aggressive grasshopper that got bumped into too much, like they become hyper aggressive and they come, become predatorial and they become cannibalistic. Oh. They start eating other grasshoppers, right? Mm. Well, once one starts doing that, others that bump into that one start doing it too wow. and so this becomes this like frenzy of cannibalistic grasshoppers which are locusts and then they just they start swarming and they just become like this evil horrible swarm that's attacking each other eating each other eating everything in sight it's like this frenzy and there's this horrible frenzy of um what i think we would all kind of classify as evil yeah. you know just hyper aggression um terrible uh treatment of each other and with that um, they basically cannibalize each other until there are only a few left. And then when, you know, they're not overpopulated anymore because there's only a few left, they transform back into grasshoppers. No way. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> wow. So, um, hey, Shireen, move over towards your bathroom just a little bit because. Is this way more? Go ahead. Is that the wrong I'm going to let you talk for a second so I can see you. Is this the wrong way? This way? Um, there we go. Oh, yeah. Th this is better? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. Okay, good. cool. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, the reason I bring that up is I am, think we are witnessing our society kind of going locust. Um, mm. and, and because we're going locust, it's triggering everyone. So, so the part of going locust is like developing this highly exploitative, um, you know, kill or be killed mentality, uh, you know, you versus the world. And I think we're seeing like the hyper aggressive uh, locus now at the helm of all of our power structures. Mm -hmm. So both our financial structures and, and our uh, government structures are being looted by these hyper aggressive locusts, yeah. you know? And so that is the uh, that is the thing that I think we as a tribe of, you know, we could call ourselves way seers or we could just call ourselves seers or the people who are awakened. Yeah. We as an awakening tribe have the opportunity to um, change things, to change things in a way culturally where these hyper aggressive grasshoppers are no longer encouraged to keep being aggressive. Yeah. And I think we can do something about that. So uh, so that is what I wanted to kind of go with on this stream is like, you know, how how do we uh, change ourselves? How do we come from a better place where we're no longer encouraging others to become these hyper aggressive creatures? Yeah. And I and I think part of that is like when you see people swarming, you know, if if a storm is coming or, you know, there's not enough food in the grocery stores or there's not enough Xboxes on Black Friday, it's like all of a sudden you see people triggering each other to get more aggressive mm. and and what is it we can do to start triggering each other to become um more cooperative mm. that's the uh that is 
that is our opportunity. And Trina, I'm going to just let you just kind of jump in and share your light a little bit here. Oh, you're so sweet. I love to shed a little light. What can we do to become more cooperative? I think that's a beautiful question. My goodness. With all the crazy that's happening in the world right now, I think this is exactly the conversation that needs to be happening. Hmm. I think the first thing that comes to me is, and I just, you know, I'm just a big fat cliche right now, is just literally being more compassionate. I mean, I just feel like that is the simplest thing. When you're tuned into others, how they feel, who they are, you're less likely to bite their freaking heads off. Yeah. What do you think? Well, and, and yeah, definitely. I think, I think, um, you know, compassion is a thing, but it's like you have to have it. And part of it is, <laughs> so Sage Productions just said, oh, hi, I remember seeing you five years ago. That's great. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, more acceptance, empathy, compassion. But the problem with all that is, is, it, is that requires restraint in a way when you do it like as a behavioral thing. And the, we all know like when, when we really get pushed, there is either something in us that can transcend that, that button pushing and this, or there's something right. in us uh, that, that is... Um, reacting. That is just reacting, yeah. right. And it's like when we get empty, we react. You know, when we're exhausted, we react. When yeah. we're pushed too far, we react. And so the, uh, <clears throat> the opportunity here is to find a transcendent love or state of grace yeah. that you can tune into right. that helps you be transcendent. So it's not like we, it's not like we just have to, uh, you know, stop doing this or start doing this. You know, someone on Facebook just said, you know, reprogram our brains. Um, yeah. You know, th there's there's all sorts of stuff at a fund, you know, fundamental levels, like physically, like what is your biome like telling you to do? My biome tends to tell me to eat pizza, you know? Mm. It's like there is, a, <laughs> so we've got our microbiomes telling us to do one thing. We've got our social and societal programming telling us to do another thing. And then we've got our hearts and souls yeah. that's like, that are kind of like whispering to us. They're um, much quieter, usually. Sometimes your heart can be very loud. Um, generally, your soul is quiet yeah. and we need to find a way to be in tune with those and i think the way you make your heart and soul louder is by tuning into it mm. so you know we're here to disabuse you of the things that hold your mind prisoner and the things that hold your mind prisoner are sort of uh bad ideas that kind of keep you from tuning into your heart and soul and so the good idea is to turn on tune in drop out and I think a lot of people for a long time didn't like the drop out thing. But I think as we talk about this more, we might realize that dropping out is exactly what you need to do when you find yourself in a highly concentrated cluster of uh, grasshoppers that are turning into locusts, like drop out of that frenzy, you yeah. know? And so we right now as a humanity are in this frenzy of locust-like humans who are just ripping apart our country, ripping apart our environment, and we are like at a loss. We're like, what do we do? Do we fight them? Yeah. Because fighting them only results in more locust-like behavior. Yeah. Do we just love them? It's like, well, loving them, I think, A, often is bullshit. <laughs> like, often we'll say, oh, I'm just sending love to you. But it, you really, like, check with your heart. Are you really sending love to that asshole who is destroying your country, your school, <laughs> your <laughs> environment, whatever? Are you really able to send love to them? Yeah. It takes a transcendent state to send that love. So how do we tap into that state of self-transcendence where you are no longer personally afraid, where you're no longer coming from your separate self and you are really coming from that greater you, that heart and soul you that yeah. is aligned with truth, that is um, untouchable in a way. So um, Shireen, I, I, I want to throw at you that we have got uh, all kinds of comments going on on Facebook that are not getting picked up by our little mm -hmm. comment doohickey, who, which I hope will soon be <laughs> picked. <laughs> I'm yeah. enjoying the bottom comment on our feed right now. <laughs> Ebola, small dick. Nature always seeks balance. Um, yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> 
<laughs> um, so what I would love for you to do, Shereen, is just let me know, is there anything on these comments on Facebook that are um, sort of pertinent to what we're talking about that we might want to consider? And I'm just going to keep ranting until you interrupt me okay. uh, with something over there because it's too hard for me to read, read and speak at the same time. Well, John, uh, Johnny says, yeah, I can't keep watching this. I can't fall in love on a Wednesday. Sorry, bro. I, I can't fall in love on a Wednesday? <laughs> I, yeah. I added the sorry, bro, but I just... Okay. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. You know, so... so <laughs> I mean, there's, so, there's a lot of them. I could give you one right now. I, yeah. So we got one. I, I think humans don't mentally evolve like that. History has taught that humankind evolves at the precipice. Only at the precipice or in the face of a common enemy, we unite as a species. In this case, I think we need to use climate change as our common enemy. But the problem also is that humans have an infinite void within, and we're always hungry of everything for everything. So I think we have a long way to go. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, talking about how we can evolve as human beings, and like putting out ideas like let's all focus on climate change, let's all focus on uh, this, that, or the other thing. Those are great, but the problem is that we have you know just as many red states saying there's no such thing as climate change exactly um we have you know all of this debate about what is um what is true we 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 don't even share facts anymore like there is uh, facts aren't facts anymore yeah. um, <laughs> truth isn't truth anymore what are we doing here exactly so when met with this then we have only one choice and that one choice is to change ourselves mm -hmm. and how do we change ourselves Let's go through those steps. So it's like turn on. What is turn on? Turn on is like, you know, recognize that there are so many different yous. So um, ask not uh, what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Yeah. So that's turning on. Like that is like getting back to your truth, getting back to yourself. Find the real you. Mm -hmm. Tune in. Tune in to that higher transcendent self, you know, the transcendent love. That is the thing that's going to fill you yeah. with a, a kind of state of grace, a kind of genius, a kind of, um, you know, people talk about empathy, but the way you get the empathy is by being tuned into an infinite reservoir yeah. of love. And we don't have that personally. That is something you need to kind of uh, transcend into. And wayseers, people who love things like the Wayseer Manifesto and the videos that I've put out, the reason you love that stuff because it's because it reminds you of a state of grace that you are very familiar with. Like yeah. there is some part of your heart and soul that goes, ha, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that feeling. I know that state. I want to be back there. And and so go back there. That's the thing. Go there. That is what you, that is your greatest gift to humanity right now is going to that place on, a, on the regular, on a regular basis. Yeah. So going back there and then finally... It's like drop out. Now, drop out is not like, hey, just stop paying your bills, drop out of society, all that stuff, though it can be. The most important thing is drop out of the stupid mindfuck ideas, all the social programming, all the sort of societal conventions yeah. that aren't true to your heart and soul. So if like you enjoy getting in the coffee line and turning around and talking to the person next to you and saying, hey, how's your day going? You know, they could be, they're a total stranger, right? If you enjoy like that kind of free love and interaction, yeah. drop out of the societal convention that you don't talk to the person next to you in line unless you know them. Right. Like talk to them, oh. be with them, buy them a coffee. Like all of that stuff is like dropping out of the bullshit yeah. that, you know, plagues our lives, that keeps us separated. Right now, if we want to talk about what the evil grasshoppers turn locusts at the helm of our power structures are doing right now, is, you know, even our president talks about, like, the deep state, you know, or the dark state. And, and what this is, is, like, there's a shadow government that is running even the presidents and the heads of state that we see, like, there's some sort of, you know, uh, menacing or overpowered uh, behind the scenes power structure really fueled by like the people who are holding all the purse strings, all the money. Uh, and if that's happening, guess what they're doing? 
what they would be doing is saying, okay, well, listen, there's this game that gets everybody up in a frenzy and not paying attention to what the uh, people who are grabbing all the money and power are doing. Mm -hmm. Well, we end up like at each other's throats over social issues, over, you know, whether uh, we should build a wall or not or any of that bullshit. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, you know, these social issue issues are used to divide us. And when we are divided, we're no longer paying attention to the people who are looting our country and our world and destroying our world because we're all worried about um, whether that guy over there is wearing a Trump hat or not. And when that happens, uh, we are now fighting over nonsense. Yeah. So we have been divided. You know, we have been taken and pitted against one another. Um, and we need to, like, generate within ourselves uh, the culture of just like, no, 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 no. I'm not playing this game anymore. I yeah. don't care what your politics are. I'm not worried about that. What I care about is really extending that love that's in my heart to you no matter what you believe, no matter what you think. Because if I can connect with you as a human being and you're standing next to me in line somewhere and we have a lo lovely conversation, it's going to warm, it's going to thaw you out, it's going to thaw me out. We're going to be less like locusts, we're going to be more like grasshoppers. Yeah. And the world is going to, there's going to be a contagion to that. Yeah. So that just as there's a contagion to hyper aggressiveness, there's a contag contagion to, to that love and connecting and communion. And so this is our opportunity. I'm like, I'm actually really surprised that you've gotten some flack on the dropout piece. I think that's like super genius. I feel like, I feel like it's like, like you said in the beginning, like macro, like you're like, there's two different states of mind, if you will, like one, you're like on the battlefield and you're in it. And like, you know, that's the pitting against each other. And you're so in it that you actually can only see like a few feet in front of you. But then if you sort of like, you know, widen your focus and you take a bird's eye view and you sort of drop out, if you will, of the intensity of being on the ground level, you can see the big picture and you can see how the game is being played almost like as if you're a coach on the sidelines of a soccer field you can see how the game is being played and therefore you can make objective decisions as to what's like the actual most effective way to make things better like but if you're a player and you're all in it it's actually much more difficult to see outside of it so i love the dropout piece i can't believe people give you flack on that i think that's great like you know. Well, I, I started the dropout piece back in 2011 and 2012, and that's where we got the flack. Hey, we've got Facebook comments. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, okay. so, so I did reach out to tech support on Restream, and they uh, they have given they have made our comments work. Hurrah! All right. So this is you know this is another piece to it. Another piece to it is realize that all, right. all of us this this tune in piece is a call out to tech support. Oh, look at that. It's, it's beautiful. This is music to my eyes. <laughs> Seeing <laughs> and, and tech supports are commenting now. I think they fixed it. So uh, there we go. It should be fixed now. It's wonderful. Um, <laughs> so if you're having trouble with anything, there's this weird secret. And the weird secret is ask for help. And I know that's like, okay, well, obviously ask for help. But I'm saying it doesn't even matter who you ask for help. It just matters that you ask for help because when you ask for help, it's I've I've experienced this so many times. We're going to talk about a lot, a lot of weird things on this show because I have given up trying to be scientifically correct. I believe in science. We're using science to make these comments work, to make these live streams work. I get it. Science works. But I also get that there's a lot that science doesn't understand yet that I experience on the daily and I would like to be able to talk freely about what my experience is. So my experience is, as woo-woo as it sounds, my experience is anytime I'm having trouble with something, if I ask for help, the mere act of asking for help seems to call in some kind of divine assistance. Mm -hmm. And the, so that means like, okay, you know, something's going wrong uh, for me you know, on a technology thing. I go, I talk to tech support half the time just the act of calling tech support, the problem fixes itself. I haven't even reached tech support yet. I've just picked up the phone to call them, and yet, boom, it's fixed. Uh, now, take that to another level. Uh, when I'm in trouble in a in sort of a cosmic way, I, you know, my life is going sideways. I don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm going to pay these bills. I don't know how to, you know, do this, that, or the other thing. 
I will go into a state of prayer. I will pray and I will pray for, for tech support. I'll be like, Father, tech support, help me. And so like that, I kid you not, works like way, way, way more. I mean, it, it seems to have worked every time, okay? Because I'm still here. So it seems to have worked every time. But it's amazing that calling for tech support really, really helps. And if you want to hear like a whole uh, podcast on it, you can go look for the Wasier show on iTunes and boom, there you are. Uh, there's, there's tech support. Um, there, there's a, there's a whole episode on tech support on our podcast. We go deep into it. Um, but yeah, it's like, call it what it is. When you ask for God's assistance, he is there for you always, right? That, you know, that, that is, uh, you know, that's what I'm talking about. And I think like in our sort of sciencey, um, atheistic oriented culture, it, you know, it's like, there's a lot of people say there's no science to that. Right. No, there isn't. But try it. Like, I, I get that, the, it, you know, there's no science to back up that there is this, you know, uh, yeah. cloud uh, father that like comes down and helps you. I get it. But, but. you know, next time you're in a pinch ask with your whole wholeheartedly ask some for ask for some sort of divine assistance and even if you don't believe just say look i don't believe but i'm asking yeah earnestly asking see what happens well i'm telling you it's worked for me and like you know there's actually research behind this they I, i don't know exactly what study it was but i do know that they did a really long study on um i believe it was cancer patients they had two test subjects one had people praying for them and one did not. And um, on many different cases, similar to this, the ones who had people praying for them would almost always have better results and heal faster and get better. So I just, you know, like you said, like, it doesn't matter what you call it. It just matters that you call it. Like, well, I don't know, you know, like we don't need to make, and that's the thing I think like to some degree, like how do you make sense of God? Like it's not necessarily, um, a place in the world that you make it make sense or how do you make sense of the universe like again i really don't care what people call it it's more just like there's some thing happening out there in the cosmic universe that is positive when you sort of seek help yeah and seeking help comes from a place of humility you know it's like i don't have all the answers that's i think that's a big part of it because like the ego is this block in us it blocks us from the light from the transcendent love when you experience self-transcendence what you're experiencing is getting out from under the ego and now you're open to this this majestic light that is available to all of life um but when we have the ego it's like this ego is kind of this i don't know thing that's over us that blocks us from from the light blocks us from the experience of transcendent love and so by asking for help you're basically saying okay this ego thing that's here to always tell me that i know what to do uh i'm i'm saying it does it's not working the ego's not working yeah. so what else is there is there something outside of you something beyond you beyond the little you beyond the small self that really uh can help you and the weird thing is that's also you. We just don't identify with it most of the time. Mm-hmm. So that greater you that does have the answers, that is full of grace and love and beauty and strength, mm. uh, real power, spiritual power, like that you is available at any time you have the humility to say, oh, but it's not this me. Yeah. It's like this kind of you need to achieve this self transcendence um trish just said i'm in debt and everything's hit me at once and i felt so much anger about it today so falling into this love talk was perfect timing yeah so yeah trish just like call for help give that call you know if you can find a space to yell out I, i you know i've done this in my car i have like gone driven off somewhere and yelled you know to to the heavenly father uh and I was overwhelmed with love, the feeling of like love coming back down, uh, uh, like sh- being showered with love after making that call wholeheartedly to this like invisible cosmic uh, creator, you know? Yeah. So whatever you call God, and it doesn't have to be God, it could be truth. So if you are completely atheistic and you're like, 
I don't believe in any kind of man in the sky. I don't either. I believe in a cosmic divine intelligence. But if you don't even believe in that, it's like, well, there is something, there is some sort of transcendent truth to our reality. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's all of humanity's consciousness combined. Maybe, all, you know, if you think of all the cells that are at work in your body, right? Mm -hmm. it, not, not, there's no single one of them that's like, that's you. Yeah. You are, I mean, we're talking from a purely atheistic, materialistic viewpoint. You are not one particular cell. You are the emergent consciousness from millions and millions, or if not trillions of cells, all coming together, sharing a little bit of something, energy, consciousness, electricity, who knows what it is, mm -hmm. but it's like, you are this trillion cell being and then out of that trillion cell being you experience this consciousness that you identify as you well okay well you are one that you is one cell in a seven billion cell being and if you want to include all of the creatures in nature now you're talking trillions again and there is a cosmic intelligence i'll say to that or 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 life intelligence that is all of those combined so is it possible for you to tune into that that greater macro life intelligence, even if you don't believe in God, if you don't believe anything beyond what can be explained materially? And I think yeah. try that. You know, see if you can tune into that greater intelligence. It'd be like you know, it would be like a a blood cell tuning in, a white blood cell tuning into what is uh, you know the greater body that I'm serving really need right now. And, you know, that greater body might be saying, hey, I'm, f you know, I'm fighting this particular disease. Can you help me out? And you as a little white blood cell go, OK, I hear the calling. I'm going after that disease. Yeah. So it's like you are a white blood cell for humanity. You can call out to the greater being and say, what is it the world needs? The world needs is for you to line up, tune in to that higher transcendent intelligence. And then that transcendent intelligence a will give you, you know, instructions, if you will, or direction or guidance towards what is needed overall, but also will serve you and help you mm. get, send you reinforcements and, and, and those problems, those things that have got you stuck, you'll all of a sudden find falling away. So if you're really in a, in a bind right now, call out for that grace. I, I deeply, sincerely believe it works. I've seen it work too many times not to believe it. Um, and you know, that's okay. What else we got here? Well, so there's an interesting comment. Um, someone, their name was like empathy or something on YouTube with like a three and a four. Anyway, the point is they said, I've been calling out for help for years and I haven't had, like it's never worked. So what would you say mm. to someone who has that kind of a feeling? Well, uh, so first thing is, um, you're, you're still with us. So that's a good sign. True. The second thing is, um, you know, there's that old cliche, you know, thank God for unanswered prayers. You know, sometimes what we think we need or want isn't what we need or want or isn't the way we need or want it. Um, and then and then also sometimes and I've experienced this a lot myself. I have been calling out for uh, financial help for years myself. And, the, you know, what I what I've gotten back again and again is terrible frustration and disappointment financially. But what I've also got, it's pushed me to do this right now to be here live streaming to you as opposed to chasing uh, that business that I think will make, you know, a million dollars or ten million dollars or a hundred million dollars. Like, you know, I've been an entrepreneur my entire life and I've chased many entrepreneurial uh, opportunities and I, I have kept finding myself, especially since I released the Wayseer Manifesto, pushed like I would get into a really great venture and it would go nowhere. And I'd put all this work in and I'd pray for help and I would wish it was going to work. And I, I would just always like be beaten down by it. And I'm going, well, what is going on here? And the one thing that I keep getting is like, no, 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 you you need to be getting out there doing these videos doing these live streams like that is what i'm being called to and i have no idea how this is ever going to pay the bills like i have no idea but i'm doing it now because that's what i'm called to and i think so if you're fine in find you're in a situation where you keep asking for help and the help seems to not be there 
the help might be just sort of holding you in a very uncomfortable spot until you make that choice and you know what it is you know what that choice is because like when i say it right now it's like you know what that choice is that you've been avoiding when you make that choice and actually follow through with action in that direction that you've been avoiding all of a sudden you might have the you know the grace of god the invisible hands angels coming to your assistance all of a sudden everything works now i i believe this that this what i'm doing right now is part of that for me and we'll see you know if you don't see any live streams in a few months Maybe I was wrong, uh, so we'll we'll see how that works. But that's kind of my experience. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I'm just gonna totally. I mean, I want to like preface this ten times so nobody's offended, but like without wasting too much time on that, I'm just gonna say I think that sometimes if life feels that negative, where you're like, I just am getting no support and I just keep getting beat down. I think everything you said, Garrett, is 100% relevant. And yet there also might be the possibility that this person is, I don't know or not, you know, I have no, but there, I feel like sometimes people are actually caught in a loop of depression and they don't know it. Like I will honestly, yeah. that, that happened to me. Where yeah. I had yeah. postpartum depression after my first kid, but I was such a coach, you know, I was so in this consciousness community that I kept trying to sort of talk myself out of it and be positive and all of the good stuff that all makes sense when you're not depressed, it works like a friggin' charm, but mm -hmm. I do think to some degree there's like a there's a piece where sometimes people are actually just depressed and they really just need like support like the chemicals in their brain aren't firing the way they're supposed to to give them the dopamine and the happy happy drugs you know that they need to feel good and functional on a daily basis so i think sometimes um yeah i'm only saying that to be helpful i really don't want to offend somebody yeah. so like part of me is afraid well, to offend somebody but i just i wanted to say it to be helpful yeah, it definitely. If you're if you're in a state of depression, there's ways to get out of it. Um, I want to just point out, a, and I'll go right back to this, but I do want to point out this comment right here at the top. Unless you acknowledge the redemption of Christ, which connects you to the Holy Spirit, you are not really tuned in to his frequency. I want to uh, address that, um, and I will in a minute. Uh, but like what Shereen's saying, it's like biochemically, you could just be depressed. I totally get that. For me, it's like go get a go get a strong cup of coffee. That can help. Get a workout. Get exercise. Yeah. Like that can help. And if that's not helping, definitely you know see a doctor. And maybe yeah. there's um, some sort of medicine that can help you too. But in addition to that, or beyond that, the transcendent love that we're talking about, tune in, tuning into that state of frisian you will get goosebumps when you're doing it right. That's what you know. If you go watch uh, some of my videos, like we are from the future. Those are designed to get you into that uh, state where you are experiencing that grace. And, you know, this kind of goes to this comment, unless you acknowledge the redemption of Christ, which connects you to the Holy Spirit, you are not really tuned into his frequency. I believe that if you are tuned, you can tune into the frequency, doesn't matter what you call it, just matters that you call it. Like God isn't sitting there. First of all, God d doesn't speak English originally. Okay. It was Aramaic. So like there was no freaking word Holy Spirit back then. Okay. <laughs> it was, you know, it was some other Sumerian or Aramaic word that, um, that you know, was referred to as God. Okay. And, and so whether you call God, God in English, whether you call Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit in English, or Christ, or whatever you want to call it, the essence is what we need to tune into. And some people experience that essence in different ways. So it's like we don't need to beat each other over the head about what word you use for it. But are you tuning into the highest state of love, the highest, the creator, the ultimate creator, the um, highest expression of love, the most holy? Are you tuned into that? Because I believe, you know, in my own theology, now I was brought up Catholic, my own theology is, yes, that is Jesus Christ, that's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But if someone was brought up Buddhist, right. like they might not be calling it that. They might be calling it something else. Yeah. But if, as long as you're tuning into that ultimate love, that perfect love, that perfect uh, place where the atonement, the, the ultimate forgiveness comes from, it's like that is the thing. So we need to all tune in to the highest state of love we can reach. And having a name for it is great. But I, I, I sincerely believe that there are some people uh, in, the, in Christian circles who, when they use the word Jesus Christ, are not referring to that love. They are referring yeah. to some other entity, some other false Christ, some other false entity. And they might be saying his name, 
but they're not meaning his his true essence uh you know yeah. and then there might be somebody who has no word for for that but they express uh the the love and tenderness of christ or holy spirit and 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 they are you know an expression of it and they might call that krishna they might call that buddha they might just call that truth it doesn't matter what you call it yeah. and we got to stop beating each other up over whether you call it allah or god or whatever like that doesn't matter what matters is that you are coming from that state of grace yeah. and and as long as you're doing your own internal as long as you have your own internal barometer of what is true love what is true grace what is truly self-transcendent you know that's that's the important thing and i think the way you know that is you get that ring of truth you feel that ring of truth. Yeah. You feel the goosebumps. You feel your hair stand on end. You feel like, you know, many uh, people who have spent their lives sort of cultivating the experience of the Holy Spirit, you know, they're called the Quakers and the Shakers. And it's like you can feel that, that your hair standing on end. You can feel yourself trembling and shaking because this energy that is coming through, this Holy uh, Spirit energy that's coming through you, like that is, you know, that's the truth. And it doesn't matter what you call it, yeah. to just find the thing that makes you vibrate like that, the thing that makes you really come alive, because that is that is the true God. And we all have this these false gods, and the false gods are, you know, what we label something, or we might have a ritual that we do all the time, but it's not really getting us there. Mm -hmm. It's like, use the thing that really gets you there. Um, I don't know, I think I've said enough no, on that. I love that you brought that up, because it's so funny, like we started this whole thing talking about the grasshoppers and the locusts and how we don't want to get into that space of like going at each other and arguing about things. And so it was like possible that that could have happened based on sort of like religion. Like let's now discuss like who God is and who God isn't and how you should call it or, but you addressed it in a way that really supports us in going on a macro level, like getting out of the ground floor, you know, like on, being like the soccer player on the field and getting out and going, okay, as someone who's looking at this from a big, big picture, I can see that it's actually more important for us to tune into the highest frequency of love rather than fight about what it is that we call it. I just love that you right. that. brought it full circle, Gary. Yeah. So good. And we've, and we've all got, like, I'm going to give you a metaphor here. It's like we've all got our sort of inner um, stadium, let's say, okay? It's like your mind is as big as a stadium. And in some place in that stadium, there's a seat where uh, the living expression of the most holy love is sitting, just waiting for you to come get a hug, get what you need, be redeemed, find salvation, all that. And there are a lot of people who rightfully call that, that, uh, that being who's sitting in that seat, Jesus Christ, who is an expression of the Holy Spirit, that many people will call that. Others will call that 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 person buddha others will call that person krishna okay and but the thing is like you need to find in your own consciousness the way to get to that seat to go find that uh that consciousness that you can now um have lead you guide you and embrace you and bring into your life it's like you need to find what that is now i think the mistake of many organized religions is they get this word this name and then they start labeling a particular seat with that word and name and it might not be the right seat right. and so i think there's a lot of um organized religions especially when they get hyper fundamentalistic and they get aggressive where they might have an imposter uh who's sitting in like a, you know a different seat and they're saying this is jesus christ or this is allah and then they're making like you know the poor little kids like go and sit in that seat with this hyper aggressive or somewhat aggressive or fraudulent uh character playing the role of redeemer and the, the, the child, um, the, you know, the, the wise children say, this is bullshit, I'm out of this religion. And then, the, and then the not so wise children might just start clinging to the habit of go, always going to that seat. And they're not getting any love from this fraudulent uh, character because they've gone to the wrong place in their consciousness to find redemption. So really your, your job is to find the true living Christ, the true living Krishna or Buddha or light, the true living transcendent love. There is that still small voice inside you mm. and when you find that voice you will be showered in love you will weep you will feel so full of love and grace you will get tingles you will get goosebumps your body might vibrate like you will start to experience this transcendent state mm -hmm. this transcendent love 
showering you in love, light, grace. And when you get that, now you know you're in the right place. And then it doesn't matter what you call it, but it does matter that you keep calling that. That's what I believe is the truth of all spiritual disciplines, is finding that state of grace in your own consciousness, finding, figuring out how to get there, and then to keep going back to it. I love it so much. So we have about three more minutes, guys. <clears throat> give us your questions, okay. give us your thoughts, tell us what you're feeling from all this juju we're bringing to you. <laughs> all right uh and, and you know uh, you know and, and that's that's again another way to drop out you know so turn on tune in drop out what is that it's turn on figure out what makes you come alive tune in tune into that state of grace that self-transcendent essence and when you will feel the ring of truth you will like whoa this is really true like when you feel that you know you're in it, you're on it. And then drop out of whatever other labels or structures or things pull you away from that because you should live in that state of being turned on and tuned in. Mm -hmm. And so you'll know, okay, I'm turned on, I'm tuned in. What is trying to pull me out of this state? Drop out of that, yeah. drop into the things that keep that, that amplify that state, that keep you going there. Yeah. And if you're kind of going, well, what is it that's gonna help me tune in that's why that that has been the that has been the spirit behind my videos and i can't say that every video has it but check check the videos out and like th there should be a couple moments in some of those videos where you feel that spirit move in you when you feel like your heart and soul sing and if you're getting that from my videos hallelujah and if not figure out what does do it for you yeah. but like as soon as you experience that state of frisson which is you know goosebumps awe you're looking for the state of awe your hair standing on in your body become electrified yeah. feeling truly alive when you get that that's the tune in stay tuned in to that and uh, we will uh, be broadcasting hopefully three days a week Monday Wednesday Friday same time so whatever time this thing started we're gonna start around that same time mm -hmm. uh, that, the the intention is sometime between 2 30 and 3 uh, New York time we're gonna keep coming back. We're gonna keep getting better at this. Um, and hey, you know, whatever you want us to talk about or do, like we don't even have to be sitting in this room. We could start getting out in the world and doing some crazy stuff too. Though I just got the technology working here. We'll see if we, uh, you know, we'll see how crazy we can get. Um, are there any other questions that you have seen, Shireen, that we should address before we uh, chime out? It looks like everyone's just saying like they loved it and they're mm. getting a lot from this and they're very happy to see you jumping on board again. Um, here's one question that just came through. We all want something to believe in. If someone believes in something, question mark, why would you want to take that away if they're not hurting anyone? So yeah, she's just kind of, I think, making a point around, and then she said, Jesus saves. He tossed the bankers at the tables. Yeah, she's just saying not, don't judge. I think she's just saying don't judge. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like we all have our inner, it's like, even words like what you think words mean are different than what other people think words mean and and so you know my word for house conjures a particular image in my mind which is very oddly similar to my own house and your word for house might conjure uh, an image in your mind which is much more similar to your house and then when somebody starts describing uh, how a house works or how to do a house or whatever it's like we've both got different things going on in our minds so really it's like we re need to respect one another and say you know the way you interpret words is going to be different from the way I interpret words. But if you are experiencing true aliveness and true love, it's like that's that's, yeah. you know, even the word love. I mean, I guess that could be sabotage. So it's like, who knows? It doesn't matter what you call it, though. It just matters what we call it. And if your your religion and your spirituality are working for you, hallelujah, that's great. And if you're feeling like there's a void in your life, you know, that that could be it that you know maybe you grew up in a religion or a spirituality that was not cohesive for you was not bringing you to that experience of self transcendence and that experience of tremendous transcendent love and grace and so then it's now is your opportunity to, to rekindle that to find what is it in your life that brings you back to that state of aliveness that state of like an outpouring of love where you just feel connected and, and in love with everybody. And what that generally is, is that you've found something you can have reverence for, something you can experience awe with. And our ministry here, 
if you want to call it a ministry, mm -hmm. is to reconnect ourselves and everyone with us into that state of awe, that state of grace, that state of self-transcendence, to experience that transcendent love. And, um, and the best way I can do it is just to keep going there myself and then describe what I'm experiencing. And then we're going to talk about a bunch of weird stuff. No, no topic is uh, off limits. I'm happy to talk about anything. Um, because we are rebels and risk takers here too, so let's all let's enjoy the fun. Um, what about in my father's house? There are many mansions. I love that. That's a great. That's a great way to end it. All right, people. Great seeing you. Hallelujah. Hopefully, we'll uh, have many more of these. Come back Friday. Friday this time that we started is uh, is our next intention to have one of these if the technology doesn't break. <laughs> so all right. <laughs> Bye everyone. Thank you for being All right, bye. Us. God bless you.